Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the stochastic random processes. So we will discuss in detail what is the stochastic random process. Myself, Dr. Garg, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute, India. So what is the motivation behind this random process? Before we explain in detail. So if you are working on the tossing the coin or say any of the random experiment, so let x is the number of the heads are obtained. So what are their outcomes? Either the outcomes is head or tail so if i denote it small s as the number of the outcomes then the x is my random experiment either as a 1 or 0 provided is a head or tail or you can say this is a random variable x assigning a real numbers to the each outcome of the experiment similarly if you if you throw a dice then the outcomes are either 1 either 2 3 or up to the 6 are there. On the other hand, what is the random process? A random process is if we assign any of the function which is dependent on the time to each of the outcomes that called is that is called as the random process. It is denoted by x of tx. For example, if you consider about here, if we if we define the first time that is the x1 of t is nothing but here if it is head otherwise we call as a sine of 2t as x is a tail you can define also either as of the cos of this and any of r there depending on their function to function so this process is called as the random process however if they are independent of the time then we will call as the random variable in our day to day life there are many application which we have observed which are varying over the period of time the most beautiful example is you can see over the stock market you can see this is the my stock price which are which are changing frequently with respect to the passage of the time so you can see if i observe from the time t is equal to 0 to that t is equal to 1 and these are the behavior of the stock's price sometimes it may be increased sometimes they decrease and so on so if i consider any of the time say x of t is my stock price from 0 to infinity and i consider t of 0 is my current time then at any of the fixed time say this is my t1 and corresponding to this time this is called as random variable or random process similarly if you consider another time say here as a t2 then we will call as the another random variable or a random process is there so in general we will collect we will consider the collection of all those values of the x of t which are varying from here then that process is called as the random process or it is also called as the stochastic process what you can say that a random process is nothing but the collection of the random variable specifically indexed by the time or you can say the space r so based on this concept we can simply define the formal definition of the random process as of here so assume you have to perform an experiment any of the experiments are there either you can say tossing the coin or you can say throwing the dice or you can say pick the ball any of the experiments are there then from the sample space then if you assign a function time function t to the each of the outcomes then the collection of all those families is called as the random process that is the x of t s is there if you fix the value of the t that is at a particular time then this value is my fix that is that means this right hand side is independent of the time then we will call as the random variables over the s is my outcome of the random experiment on the other hand if you fix the time if you fix the sp uh, outcomes of the experiment that is the s then this is the function of that time that is a single variable then we will call as the sample function so remember the sample function is always depends upon the time is there or we call as the assemble function or the realization of the random process so on the other hand lastly if both the t and s whatever the time experiment and the uh, random experiments are fixed then it is nothing but the real number what are the classification of the random process which are discretized into the several categories so i consider e as the collection of all those experiments which are taken from the outcomes of the random experiment and capital T I set as the index set that is index set means which are depending upon the time factor so there are the two terms E set of the outcomes and T is the uh, index parameters 
so if i consider the t as a discrete that is whatever the time period is considered as a discrete then the process is called as the discrete time process or called as the discrete parameters in here if i consider this is my discrete then we will call as the discrete time process or it is also called as the random sequence it is and defined like of this n is my 1 2 and so on these are my discrete numbers on the other hand if i consider the uh, t and the set of the experiment both are my discrete then we will call as the sequence are there and call as the discrete random sequence for example if i consider the number of the heads obtained in the nth toss of the two fair coin so what are those so what is that what is a random experiment so what are the outcome of the random experiment if you toss the coin two times how many heads are obtained from here either zero either there is a no head appears either the one head appears or either the two heads appear and what is my time experiments are there how many tosses are there which are changing of the time so we will call as the first toss second toss and up to the infinite tosses and e is the number of the heads or you can say the number of the outcomes are and this in this case you can see this is the number of the times you toss which is a discrete it is also the discrete so that's why this is called as the discrete random process if you have the time uh, that is the index parameter is a discrete while e is my continuous then we will call as the continuous random sequence example that's a stock market you have to see or you can see the temperature at the end of the nth hour you can see this is the end of the nth hour so the time period is my 1 2 and so on this is my end of the hour and what is the outcome of this so that what is the temperature it may be the zero it may be the 100 so i can write in the form of the close intervals are there so clearly says that this is a continuous random variable so therefore whenever e is my continuous t is my discrete we will call as the continuous random process and this is the example of it what are the discrete and the continuous random process as i discussed that if e that is a set of the outcomes whatever the outcomes you have observed from the random experiment whenever this is a discrete then the process is called as the discrete random process or the discrete state space it is also called as the chain we will describe in the markov chain the later on we so in this since it is a discrete so we will define the e as either 0 1 2 and so on so like here, if i consider as the number of the heads in the three uh tossing the coin so then the e will be my here and so on so for example if you consider the number of the sms received in the cell phones in the interval 0 comma t, t then clearly say that what is the maximum what is the number of the sms received either the zero number of the sms received either the one received two received and so on that is this is the outcomes of the random experiment so since a random experiment is my discrete so that's why this is a discrete random process however this is a continuous you remember that so they, we are talking only about the states e is there on the other hand if we consider the random state is my continuous then the process is called as the continuous random process or the continuous random state for example as of the minimum temperature recorded in a city so clearly says that the minimum temperature recorded in the city will be 0 to 100 or it may be from say minus of small t to be the plus of t1 so that's always in the form of the intervals so therefore it is a continuous random process so we have discretized the uh, stochastic random process into the four types depending on the nature of this e and the t so firstly i can consider this as a capital t either it will be my discrete or it may be the continuous that is a discrete time or the discrete or the continuous time then what are the nature of this e again it may be the discrete or it may be the continuous so if the state that is a e is my discrete then and the time is also discrete we will call as the sequence if this is a continuous as well as state are also continuous then we will call as the continuous random process if the time is my discrete and the state is my continuous then we will call as the continuous random sequence however if it is a continuous then we will call as the process r and so on. what are the de uh, deterministic and the non deterministic random process we will see 
if you are able to predict the future value can be predicted exactly from the past value then we will call as the deterministic as the name suggests deterministic that is you can determine something from the past value for example here you can see if you can easily because this is the periodic function you can easily compute the value of the x2 from the x1 and so on so this is the example of the deterministic what is the opposite of this that is which are not be determined that is the future values cannot be predicted exactly from the past values that is called as the non deterministic you all knows that the stock markets and exchange rates are there which cannot be predicted from their past behaviors what are the description of the random process so if you have the random process x of t uh, where t is the index set then we can describe the descriptions of here if you consider the fixed time t1 then what is that this is nothing but my random variable remember always whenever t is my fix then this random process will change to the random variable however if s that is the outcome of the random experiment is my fix then we will call as the process are there then we can define easily as the cdf of this random process like of this cdf of the x comma t is nothing but my probability of here yeah. so all of you know that how you can define the cdf of the random variable so since this is my uh, random variable so it is possible to define the cdf like of here so since it consists of only the first time that is only the one parameter so that's why it's called as the first order distribution of the random process on the other hand if you consider that two time that is a t1 and t2 then the corresponding random process x of t1 is nothing but my x1 because these are my given that's the fixed value and these are called as the two random variable corresponding to these two random variable we will define the joint cdf called as the second order distribution also called as the joint pdf or you can the joint density function of the two random variables how once you are defining the random variable then you can easily define the mean variance covariance and so on how you define the mean covariance correlation variances of the random process let's see here so if you consider any of the fixed value of the t then this is nothing but the random variable and once you know the random variable how you define the mean mean is nothing but my x into px so this p is nothing but my pdf so then the mean of the random variable is nothing but my mu of x is nothing but my here so if you want to open this this is nothing but my of probability is there so this mu is the function of the time and it is also called as the example average of this what is the correlation so firstly we will define the if you consider the two time periods t1 and t2 then these are the random variables the correlation between them it is denoted by r it is also called as the auto correlation or simply correlation it is nothing but my e of here if like if you have the two random variable x and y then this is nothing but my correlation between them it is also called as the auto correlation or simple correlation what is the meaning of the auto correlation it measures the degree of the dependency amongst the variables what is the t1 is my t1 is nothing but the variable corresponding to this variable corresponding to this is my t2 what is the covariance is there we all knows that how you can define the covariance between the x and y which is nothing but my e of xy minus ex ey now the same thing we hear what is that x and y is my random variable so since there are two random variables so i call as the t1 and the t2 this is same or we can also write like of this x minus mu of x and y minus mu of y so i have written like same the first random variable corresponding their mean second random variable corresponding their mean so if you open this bracket so what will happen if you open this this is the xy minus of mu x of y minus mu y of x plus mu x mu y and once you open this bracket you will get this same expression so i can write like of this what is that i can write this value as of e of x of t1 x of t2 minus mu x of t1 minus of here so you know that what is that this is nothing but my correlation and call as the r of here 
what is the variance of this we all know that if you have the covariance x and y if i take y is equal to x then this covariance is nothing but my variance of x so that is in this case if i take t1 and t2 both are same or as say small of t then if you substitute here as a t1 and t both are same this is nothing but my variance of this finally what is the correlation coefficient we all know that how you define the correlation coefficient that is the covariance of x y divided by variance of x variance of y the same thing we have defined here the covariance is denoted by c of this divided by their scale that is a variance r here this is my square root of their variances so let's describe some examples corresponding to this so if you have say a patient which are coming to the doctor office at the random process in the time t since it is a dependent on the time so it is a random process let x n denotes the times in which nth hour have to wait until the doctor will see you have to define their random process so remember whenever you want to define their random process you have to define these two parameters one is the set of the outcomes and second is the index set or the time parameter so that's a very simple since the number of the uh, number of the patients patients are always my discrete so it's my discrete times and the continuous value here so my sample space is collection of all those elements of the x which are greater than of the zero that's are here and what is the time is there that's the number of the patients are 1 2 3 and so this is rep representation of there so this is the required answer of this random process look at the here if you have the random process here you have to define this define the sample function so remember what we have discussed that the sample function is a function of the time so that's a very simple question is there how you can define the function of the time you all knows that this is given to you function of the time what is the a and b these are my independent normal distribution random variable so you can take any of the a and the b are the two random variable you can take this value here which is the function of the time so this is called as my random a sample function of this how you define the random variable so you have to define the random variable y you have to define the pdf again that's a very simple how you define the pdf we can start from the y what is the x of 1 so we all knows that x of 1 what is the x of 1 is here that is the t is equal to 1 so a plus b so it is given to be here now what is given to you a and b both follows the normal distribution with 1 1 what is the meaning of that the mean is my one variance is my here now here a and b both follows the normal distribution what is the meaning of that a plus b this is also follows the normal distribution so it means we our target is to find the mean of this a our target is to find the variance of this so how you find that this is all knows that this is e of a plus e of b this is nothing but 2 since a and b are independent given to you so you can write here as v of variance of a this is also be 1 plus 1 is 2 so what is the meaning of that it follows the normal distribution so a plus b that is a y follows the normal distribution so what is the pdf of the normal distribution you all knows that pdf of the normal distribution is here provided y lies from so mean is there variance is my how you find the e of yx so y is my here z is my this so again i can substitute the value of the e1 e here now can you open this bracket you can easily simplify them what is given to you e of a a and b are my independent this is given to you so what is the value of the ab this is nothing but my e of a into e of b can you find the value of e of a square you can find from here what is the variance of a this is nothing but e of a square minus e of x whole square so can you find the value of this variance is nothing but my 1 so what is there this is nothing but my 2 this is also be the 2 this is my 1 into 1 so you can substitute each values you will get this value is my 1 into 1 that is the required answer of this problem look at one more examples are there so a random process is given to you t is given to be uniform you have to find the value of the cdf expected values and their covariance are there that's a very very simple are again so x is given to you here 
t is given to be the uniform so we all know that if x follows a uniform distribution over here what is the pdf of this 1 upon b minus a what is the cdf of this uniform distribution that is a 0 x minus a upon b minus a and 1 that we all know that whenever x lies here this so now since t is my uniform distribution over the interval 0 1 so a is my 0 b is my 1 so you can substitute here you can see this is my pdf so since this is my cdf i call as f of t your target is to find the cdf of x of t so we can start with the cdf of the x of t here what is the value of the x of t we can substitute the value here i can find the value of t so you can see i can see t plus 1 minus t of less than i can find the value of t from here now if you compare them it means this is my small of t i can substitute here i can substitute here this and this this is the value now can you find the value of the x from here so from here you can see what is the value of the x from here this is 1 minus t from here you can find the values of this r do you understand what is that what is that this is nothing but my here so your target is to find this is my required answer of the first part how you find the expected value we all know that we need expected value into the pmf so we will find the pmf from the cdf by using their derivative what is the derivative of this this is zero with respect to x is one this is my zero can you find the mean of this again you can see this is a uniform distribution you can see one upon b minus a so once it's a uniform distribution what is the mean of this the mean of the uniform distribution is a plus b upon 2 so this is my a this is my b so the mean is here else this is the first method otherwise what you can do that you can integrate over this over 1 r here so that's the mean of this x of t so you can integrate them you will get this required uh, sorry x of t into the pmf how you find this c of this that is what is the c is a correlation which is defined like of here so we can start from here i can substitute the value of the x1 this is the x2 now i can open this bracket you can write here now if you open this what is the e of t square how you find the e of t square we all know that what is the variance of the t so t is my uniform distribution so what is the variance of the t that is a b minus a whole square upon 12 that is a variance what is the expected value of the t is a plus b upon 2 can you find the value of the e of t square from here that is the variance of t plus expected value of whole square so this is 1 by 4 is 1 by 3 so we can substitute this value here you can see i can substitute this value as 1 by 3 this is nothing but my 1 by 3 1 by 2 and so on so after the calculation you can do that whatever the answer this is the required answer of this correlation is so this is the way you can solve this random process we will solve some more examples related to the mean covariance auto covariance in our next class till then you can simply like share and subscribe this channel for more updated videos best of luck students happy learning